everybody, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill, and over here we have John Lindowski. Hey. Hey, everybody. We've had a long night of recording, so much, in fact, that I forgot to do this. <laughs> uh -huh. um, we just uh, uh, are wrapping up some stuff here, but we're going to give you guys a sneak peek. Sneak peek. <laughs> It is 12.15 while we're recording, so we apologize for any missing. Uh, yeah, um, of the Predators goalie situation over time of what their pipeline looks like. Yep. Because a lot of people asked me about the go Nashville and the Milwaukee pipeline today while we were at a Brewer game. Yep. I got asked so many questions about the pipeline. Is Tobin is coming back? Is this? Is that? I'm like, would you pay a guy $1.4 million a year for three years to play in the AHL? I don't no, think so. Wouldn't. He's not even, he doesn't even have a two-way on his deal. He'd have to go to waivers, so it's not yep. going to work out so for them. So it's not even worth it. Yep, but I had so you don't many lose someone like that. You have had so many questions today from Admirals fans. Um, some of them regarding COVID, of what I knew, and some of them regarding everything a little bit odd. And they asked me how I was doing personally, because a lot of them haven't seen me. Alrighty, so folks, um, just a little heads up for us if we. Wanted to tell you guys, um, we have been having some uh, major stuff going on with us. Uh, John's still having slight health issues with his yeah. heart, and uh, I have some news coming. Um, we will do a video um, when we're when a little, the time's right. When the, yeah, when the time's right. Those of you who know me personally already know. If you do know personally, please do not comment down below. No, please. What don't. the what I'm talking about? You know who you are. <laughs> Alrighty, so the Predators pipeline pretty much starts as such. Um, the two goalies I believe will be in Nashville this year are David Riddich. Uh, Riddich has a long history in the NHL. Yes, he does. He's uh, 29 years old, six foot three, 205, catches left-handed. Um, he has a contract for one year with 1.250 million. So yeah, they're not gonna send him out. That's too much of a, of a chance at a loss. Um, last year, especially he's, for a goalie like him. Yeah. Uh, he spent some time with the uh, Flames, uh, had, did really well there, had an off start with the Flames last season. They traded him to Ma Toronto. Toronto barely played him. No, they barely played him here, right? So you're putting in a, a cold goaltender. Uh, you play, He played 19 games total. So um, I expect Saros to carry the load, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Um just that, you know, Pekka's not around anymore. Um, much respect to Pekka. Yes. Um, but and Thank you for everything you did for the organization, again. But one of the things we wanted to bring to your attention was that this goaltender has a history of winning beyond the COVID. Oh, yeah. So, I want to see him return to that David Riddich. The former, so do I. The former guy, the guy who literally ripped us to shreds when he came here. He, he shut us out twice. Right. So, uh, Rich is a really solid goaltender. I, I, I wouldn't, I would trust him as a backup. Yeah, me too. Um, so then we got Saros. What do I gotta say about Saros? He's 26 years old, from Finland. Pekarina was his idol. He signed his mentor. Me. His mentor. How many, How often do you get to say that? Say that, it? right? Your <laughs> idol is your mentor. Right. Not often. And you're back. It's a wonderful up, thing. And you're replacing him, and you're his backup, and you got to play with him. Yeah. And you got to go to practice every day. You got to live with him. Right. You know. He did. When he got called up, he lived with him. I remember that. So I mean, for Saros, it could not have been more of a honor situation for the. You know, passing of the torch. Right. Because the Preds, they still want a cup. Trust me, the fans want one. Mm -hmm. They do. They want <laughs> right. one bad. Trust yeah. me, we hear it a lot. We want a cup. We want a cup. We want a cup. We want a cup. Fire the coach. Fire the GM. We want a cup. You know, we hear it a lot. So don't think we're not listening. We hear you. Yeah. I'm not sure Saros is the permanent replacement. We'll see how he does. Yeah. Because now... He's got the, he has all the spot laid out. Yeah, all the pressure's on him to produce, like he did last year. 
Right. You'll finish sixth in Vesna voting. Amazing, you, by the way. You've got to start strong, and that has been his biggest weakness. Right. So with that, I'm going to say that. Um, his stats last season, very, very good. 2.28 goals against average with a .927 save percentage with 21, 11, and 1. And Nine of shutouts. those, and, yeah, and three shutouts. Nine of those losses came before his injury a month into the season. Right. He played all six games in the playoffs with a 2.78 goals against average goals against average with a .921 save percentage with a two wins and four losses. Look, when it comes to that, when it comes to the playoffs last year and the year before, I really don't count them. Right. I really don't. It is really hard to count playoffs and Stanley Cups and everything like that when you are sitting there playing shortened seasons, yeah. playing rounds, when the Preds would have made the playoffs, but you're playing playing rounds and you're getting bounced in the first round by a team that didn't even have a shot to get in. Right. It's just like one of those, oh, yes, we're going to put a cold, two cold teams against each other. We're going to let the other team practice for a week. You get three days. Right. It, it, it was just frustrating. It was all depending on your COVID, COVID situation in the area you were in. Right, yeah. And then you had to travel to Canada. Which was the only place they'd let you pay. Play. Right. So it was just one of those frustrating situations that we were all in. So with that being said, um, let's talk about the pipeline a minute. Now I know... I forgot one. Oops. Uh... We're working on it here. Uh, where is he? Uh, pause that. See if it paused. It did. No, it did. We apologize for that quick miscue, but we are back. Yes. Uh, we had a slight error here with our site we're using for stats. Um, for whatever reason, kind of Ingram was part of the uh, Carolina Hurricane system. Yeah. Um, which gave us an error, which he has the the Preds have the rights to him, but because he was on the Wolves, they made a miscue and put him on Carolina. Yeah. Which is strange. Yes. Um, but certain things like that happen. So let's go to this. All right, so we do have Connor Ingram. Ingram, he has his good and his bad. We'll see how he does this year. Um, he's six foot two, 196 pounds, catches left hand, 24 years old, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. He played for the Humboldt Broncos as his youth team. Uh, third overall, third round, 88th overall pick by the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2016. Last year for the Chicago Wolves had a very bad season. The year also had a very bad time overseas. The Admirals, on the other hand, the year before, 33 Phenomenal. games came, 33 games played, 1.92 goals against average, 0.933 save percentage, two shutouts, 21 wins, five losses, six overtime losses. Yeah. I think he's got the ability. It's about getting his head right. And I think that's 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 something that I've touched on before. If you, hockey is just as mental as it is physical. Yes, and it is. And if you're not there mentally, you're going to end up, you're not going to stick around. And you will find yourself a career AHLer and guys who are past their prime passing you to get that shot in the right. NHL as a backup. So you got to get your head right. All right. Which we believe he can do. Yes. Alrighty, so we're going to get into this, and this is a little frustrating. Yaroslav Askarov got his jersey from the KHL, right? Yeah. He said after this season he's signing with the Preds. They sent him down to the minors. Your lowest static goalie on that entire team, you sent to the minors. 
on a punishment. Not liking that. No. Alrighty, and he's not playing, he's the backup there. Oh, wow. Yeah, he is the backup to a veteran there. In the KHL, the veteran always gets the nod. Right. No matter how much better you are than him, he always gets the nod. And that's frustrating. Yeah, it can be. Um, he's 19 years old, six foot four, 176 pounds. He did gain 10 pounds since he was drafted, and he grew from six foot three. He catches right-handed and is signed to 2021-22 to the uh, avant-garde Minsk. Um, so so far, they like I said, they sent him down. They haven't played him. They said. They had him up up in the KHL, didn't play him. Yep. The guy almost scored a goal as a winger <laughs> in their preseason. It's just frustrating. You got he's got so much talent. Right, he does. So I I, I, I would like to see what he does in an American setting. Um, at this point, don't expect him to play a lot. Right. There's already six games played by the KHL, three by his team, two by his team in the VHL, which is their junior division. Right. They didn't even send him down to the minors. They sent him all the way down to juniors. It's just like, dude, what the? Rah! So, there's that. That's all I got on you. All right. The introduction of Tomas Maka. Yep. It is Tomas. All right, he is 22 years old, six foot three, catches left-handed, signed through 2022-23. Fifth round pick out of 2017 by the Nashville Predators. Um, over the last couple years, he's kind of bounced around a bit. Um, but he played for the University of Connecticut last season. Uh, 23 games played. 2.84 goals against average, 0 .909 save percentage, one shutout, 10 and 11 and 10, 11 and two record. Yep. Um, he will be with the Admirals or the Everblades or the Predators. Who knows? Who really knows? At this point, like I said, we're just giving the pipeline. Yep. One player who will not be here. They don't even have a photo for this guy. Uh, Konstantin Volkov uh, was playing in the VHL, got frustrated, and went to Liga. He is signed for one year with Assad, uh, Poran Assad. Um, in the uh, Finnish league. Uh, like I said, he, they played him in the VHL. He had his chances. He, kept, he wanted to play in the K, and they. SKA St. Petersburg again. That's who had these rights. Enough said about that organization. I, I don't need to say anymore. He has good stats. One, 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 one. Okay, one, one, three, one, two, one. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Wins. Winning season. Winning season. Why not? Yeah, he had... Four winning seasons since being drafted, including his drafting season, and you did nothing with him. Right. Sometimes I wonder. Wonder why? I wonder why sometimes the KHL players come here as quickly as they do, and then like goalies, and I wonder why the wingers take so long. Well, the wingers they make a ton over there. Yeah. All right. So we got Devin Cooley. Devin Cooley left something to be on the table there. Uh, during development camp, um, as well as in the playoffs for the Everglades. Yes. So uh, I, I'm not sold on him yet. 24 years old, six foot five, 194 pounds, catches left handed. He's got one more year left on his contract. Last year he played two games for the Wolves, won them both, but had a 3.00 goals against average with a point eight nine five. I'm going to tell you right now. Cooley, if you do watch this video, I want you to understand one thing. We will not accept another version of the Cardiac Kids. If you need to know, ask the Admirals organization what they are, and we will t they will tell you. 
Farewell. My heart can't take it, neither can his. Yeah. He's just going to overtime every game. Right. Can't do it, man. All right, but for the Everglades, he did a little better. 22 games, 2.95 goals against average with a .911 save percentage. Um, with a, uh, one shutout and a 12-7-2 record. Played one game in the playoffs. Had a perfect save percentage, but I think yeah. he was a fill-in for uh, somebody. All right, on to our last prospect here. We have Ethan Hader. Anyway, well, it's spelled differently. I was about to say, any relation to Josh Hader? But nonetheless, that no, would be funny. Uh, he's from Maple Grove, Minnesota, 20 years old, 6'3", 209, catches left. Okay, maybe catching right-handed is a little more. <laughs> <laughs> um, last year, he played for the NCAA. Um, he went 7-5-4 in his first year in college. Yep. Thinking about that. Imagine going from the USHL and going into college with COVID. Right. That's got to be stressful. It has to. And, and, and you posted 2.00 goals against average in 16 games with a .921 save percentage and a 7-5-4 record where in college you're normally redshirted your first year. Right. Um, this year he will be at Clarkson University. We will be watching him with a close eye. Stay tuned for our defenseman next week. If... We and when we find out camp starts for the Preds, we may rush these. Yes. So, with that being said, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. Brought to you by Hockey Logger, 2002 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Thank you for watching, and uh, please follow us on Facebook, like our page, uh, go over to Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Thank you all for watching. Peace.